All right, welcome back everybody. It's been a while since I put out a video, apologize for that. Some crazy things have happened. Uh, I had a kid a week earlier than expected, so that obviously put me behind a little bit. And then I tried to fix some drainage in my yard, had a huge storm last night, figured it was a, a huge failure, uh, pretty disappointing, but uh, that's fine, we'll deal with that later. But for today, we're gonna get started on my son's dresser, right? Obviously he's here, I'm behind the power curve, Time to get going on this thing. This project intimidates the heck out of me because I've never done it before, anything like it. Um, and I really just need to jump in and be okay with making mistakes. And that's why we're here to learn from my mistakes, to give me critiques, advice, whatnot. Uh, some of you already have in the comments and I really appreciate that. And to all the views and, and subscriptions we got in the last two weeks, it's awesome. It's, uh, it's really motivating. So why we're here, obviously you've seen the video title. Um, I bought $750 of hardwood for $200, and I'm going to show you how you can do that too. Now, full disclosure, there is a bit of a startup cost here, but I'm going to show you why that startup cost even factored into the overall cost of the project, right, would still have saved me money from buying $750 of hardwood. So I'll kind of run you through what I'm talking about, how we do this, how we calculate it. I'm just kind of rambling right now, so let's just get started. So what I mean here, right, I bought $750 of wood for $200, so this is what I bought. And I already went through this in one of my other videos, but in case you're new here, this is rough sawn lumber, right? This is a walnut board um, that I got from a local lumber mill that sawed this board, um, or cut this board, and then kiln dried it, right? So kiln drying is just a process by which the mill dries the lumber so that it takes out uh, any possibility for moisture to reside there kills bugs that could damage the wood. Um, hey, Rue, not okay. <whistles> Sorry, my dog's in here and she's getting into the kids' car seat. So, um, anyways, it's the process by which they, Rue, back at it. Kiln drying. It's the process by which they dry the wood, reduce the moisture content, kill any bugs that may be in it that could damage the hardwood. And that dried wood prevents over time any warping or expanding, contracting of the wood while it's stored until it's ready for use. All right, so this is what it looks like. As you can see here, again, I'll hold it up one more time. It's super rough sawn. Um, it's kind of hard to tell what it is or, or see the potential in it, but it's there. So what I did when I was trying to convince my wife to use walnut, which is the type of wood that I wanted to use to build this dresser as opposed to an oak, a maple, something like that, um, I got this free sample of wood from the from the sawmill, which was great, uh, very nice of them to do. And then I took it back home and I milled it down to the final piece to show my wife this is what the cut of wood would look like. So this is what it would look like right here. This is a milled down piece of walnut. So same exact board. Literally, this board was probably five feet when I got it. I cut this piece off and then milled it down to an exact size with my joiner and planer, right? So I face jointed one side, face jointed an edge to that side, ran it through the planer, and I'll go through all of this when we get into joining the boards here in a minute, um, and then got it down to final dimension and final smoothness. And uh, as you can tell, it's a much different looking board and much nicer. But let's get uh, into why we would do this and how I saved the money and whatnot. So uh, there are basically two ways that we think about this, right? And there's a way that I was thinking about it, and there's a way that uh, professional woodworkers um, are thinking about buying wood, right? And so we're going to get into that here. So Prior to kind of getting into all this, deciding I wanted to build the dresser, anytime I needed wood, I'd go to my local big box store, Menards, Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, you name it, and I would buy dimensional lumber, right? So we think of dimensional lumber as a four by eight sheet of plywood, a one by six, 10 foot board of pine, et cetera. Um, and what I mean by dimensional is you're saying it in foot or inches, right? So a by. So a four by eight, so a four foot by eight, foot sheet of plywood. Let's say I knew I needed that like I did when I built this table. I could go to Home Depot and look for that exact four by eight sheet. However, when you go to a lumber mill, you don't do that. You buy in what's called a metric of board feet. Now, that's a little different than how we think of dimensional lumber. And you kind of have to change the way you think about it because when you're going with sawmill, that's what you're going to ask for. You're not going to look for dimensional lumber. What you do is you buy the board, the amount of board foot you need. It's a little tricky because like I said, it's not dimensional. So if you need a one by six by 10, you're going to have to buy something close to that and then mill it down. But you need it to be close to that anyways. You want it to be a little oversized, in fact, because you're going to have to take some of it off 
to get it down to the final thickness, final length, and final width that you want. So you go and you ask for this amount of board feet. And then you come back and you mill it down to that final dimensional lumber that you're looking for, the 1 by 6 by 10. Right? So that's the goal of what we're doing. So board feet. Let's talk about that in here. And I don't really have anything to draw or, or illustrate with, but I'll try to throw some stuff up on the screen here. So we calculate board feet as a unit of volume. It's super strange. I don't know how or why. I don't know any of the history behind it. I didn't even know what it was until a friend of mine that kind of helped me to get started building this dresser was like, hey, if you're going to this lumber mill, you need to tell them how much board feet you need. And I was like, board feet? I don't know what that means. I know I need a couple 10-footers. You know, is that what you mean? No. So I Googled it. Board feet, unit of volume. You calculate it like a unit of volume. You go, let me pick this up because I'm not sure how much you can see. So you go width by length by height, right? Length by width by height, whatever. Uh, second grade math. Um, and then you multiply all those together and then you get your unit of board feet. So let's just go ahead and calculate this real quick. And I'll throw the numbers up as I do it so you can follow along. Where's my tape measure? All right, so length. We've got 35 inches by, we'll say 8 inches by about an inch thick. And I can't do that in my head. So the number will be right here. That's how many board feet we have. All right, so if I needed, um, let's say I said this was a 35 by 8 inch. If I needed a 4 foot by 2 foot board, I might buy this piece of board, right? Um, because it'll give me 4 feet in length and at least... Um, four inches in width. Maybe I could go six all the way up to seven, whatever. You want to save some so you can shave it off. Um, and I would calculate that and I'd go to him and say, this is how much board feet of wood I need. And then I would select the stock that I want, which I did, right? I kind of took my tape measure out there with me and I got some rough measurements of the um, stock that he had available in Walnut. Got it close, a little longer, a little wider. Like I said, leaving some for um, dim to dimensionalize it there. Uh, and then I... I Called him over and I said, hey, this is what I picked. He took out his tape measure, did exactly what I just did. This guy was a wizard, been doing this for a really long time. Measured each board, calculated all the board feet in his head, came out to the amount of board feet total that I was buying from him. And then he charged me the rate at which he sells wood. So that's what we're going to get into next, right? Most of these sawmills, most of these hardwood suppliers will sell at a rate per board foot. So uh, for instance, this walnut cost me $5.05 per board foot. And that's going to be a little bit different uh, depending on your local area, depending on the species of wood that you have available, right? If walnut is not common in your area, let's say you're in the southwest where they're not growing walnut trees, it might be a little bit more expensive because it's not readily available. However, you're somewhere in the southeast um, or east coast and you want pine, it's going to be super cheap because it's very readily available. So you just kind of have to depend uh, or decide what you're looking for, what you're going for, and then go from there, decide what you can afford, right? Um, luckily, this place had a bunch of different woods, hickory, maple, white oak, red oak, uh, the walnut, etc. His cheapest wood was about $2 a board foot, and it was soft maple. His most expensive was the walnut at $5.05. Um, I calculated how much board feet I needed. It was right about 31 board feet. I ended up buying 40 board feet from him, which 40 times 505 is about $200. So that's where I'm getting that $200 number that I bought from this guy in board feet. Um, where I go now and calculate how much that would have cost me at a big box store, how I got this $750 number, I found a one by six by 10 foot board from Home Depot and it was $75 for that one by six by 10. Now, a one by six by 10 is this many board feet, throwing it on the screen because I can't do math, and that same amount of board foot uh, for me cost $20, right? That board foot, at 5.05 a board foot cost me $20 to buy from this guy, a one by six by 10 dimensionalized lumber, if we wanna call it that after I mill it down. That same piece of wood that I would have gotten from Home Depot, the one by six by 10 at $75 comes out to this much per board foot. So when you look at them, to, the two of them compared, and I'm pointing, assuming that I have numbers on the screen. If you look at the two numbers comparatively to each other, I've saved, I think it was like three times uh, that's, I don't, know the, I don't know what the proportion there is, the ratio, whatever. I would have paid three times the amount that I did from the local law, sawmill to get a one by six dimensionalized piece of lumber. Okay, so that's all kind of in board feet. Uh, one more thing that I got to touch on board feet. And there are a lot better videos that explain this. This is just the kind of down and dirty to get you thinking about it. And then go look at somebody with graphics and fancy stuff. I thought about having a whiteboard out here, but I got to dig it up and we're just not going to do that. Okay, the next thing you know, need to know about board feet. So another thing we'll do when we go and buy dimensionalized lumber from Home Depot 
is this piece of wood is about, um, it looks like a half inch thick. So I've gotten this down to about a half inch thick. And that's what I would do, right? I'd say I need a one or a half inch by six foot by 10 foot, half inch by six inch by 10 foot board. Um, and I'd go to Home Depot and I'd look for that exact piece at that exact dimension. Because if I need it at that exact dimension, I have no way of getting it to that dimension without a serious power tool, like maybe a bandsaw, which is really not that serious, but it'd be sketchy to, you know, whatever, um, or a planer to get it down to that dimension. Now at a lumber mill, they're likely going to sell you a fixed dimension, and they calculate that even weirder than board feet. They do it in this number that I don't know what it's called, but it would be four slash four. This is a four slash four piece of wood. And so what that means is they calculate the height, the thickness of a piece of their stock in quarter of an inch. So a four four is four quarters, the total being four. So it's a one inch board, right? 0.25 plus 0.25 plus 0.25 plus 0.25 equals one. Where's the math? Uh, one, and so it's a one inch board. Now you might see somebody selling a six slash four, and that's a one and a half inch, right? Because it's 0.25 times six over four, and that's how you get your dimension, your thickness of the wood that you're buying. Fortunately, or unfortunately, the guy that I'm buying from only sells four four lumber, which is one inch thick. Uh, fortunately for me, most of my stock that I need dimensionalized is three quarter inch thick, which allows me to plane it down to final dimension. However, the legs of the dresser need to be two and a quarter inch thick. So I'm going to have to take some stock that's one inch thick, get it down to um, an equilateral length between three pieces, glue them together, uh, do a glue up, and then I'll come out with my two and a quarter inch by two and a quarter inch, 33 inch long dresser leg and this will all make much more sense when we're doing it so that is a huge intro to what we're doing today a very quick very down and dirty of how you calculate board feet how you buy wood from a sawmill um, versus a big box store like home depot menards or lowe's and why you might want to do that and let's just circle back to the very beginning of this video i said there was a startup cost and that's because there is right your average guy, if you're just starting out, you're an amateur like me, a hobbyist, you can't just go and buy rough sawn lumber and then expect to be able to use it because this is not actually usable on a project. Some of it, even though it is kiln dried, kiln dried may be warped, may be bowed. You can get them to cut a straight edge for a little bit extra per um, board foot, which I did. So I've got a straight edge on each piece here. makes it easier to cut it down to final length. Um, However, this is not a usable board, right? You can't join these. They're rough. They're not going to fit together nicely. Um, it's not even square, really, in some places. So you need the tools in order to do it. And really, the tools you need, because I'm going to assume here, I'm going to make a basic assumption that if you're getting into the point where you're wanting to buy your own lumber versus going and getting dimensionalized lumber, you've already got at least a circular saw maybe a, a, a jigsaw, something to cut a straight edge with, right? To take down your lumber once you've dimensionalized it. What you're gonna need though, and you can't get away with this without doing it, is a planer and a joiner. Now there are all kinds of jigs on YouTube that you can look up. How do you create a joiner versus on a table saw, right? Some kind of jig that you can make. And I even tried that. I made a table saw joiner jig uh, and it looked like it was working pretty well. And I took some scrap two by fours and I tried to get a square piece of wood from it. And it worked with a very small piece of wood, still a little sketchy, wouldn't recommend. Hands get very close to a spinning table saw blade, not my forte. So uh, I tried to do it with a like eight foot two by four on a table saw. And I didn't even get the piece of wood onto the table saw because it was already too wobbly and the blades just there. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna lose a finger, I'm gonna buy a joiner. So that's why I'm saying you need a joiner and you need a planer. If you're comfortable with getting a jig together and using that, and you're not maybe using 10 foot boards, then you can probably do it. If you're trying to join a 10 foot board, you should probably have a joiner. That's all I'm saying. But uh, I'm gonna show you at the very end of this video, gosh, this intro is going so long, really sorry about that. I'll make the joining process pretty quick here. So when we get to this end of this video, stick with me, because I'm gonna show you my $200 of materials, plus what it would cost me to get a decent joiner, decent planer, and then that total cost, versus what I would have paid for totally dimensionalized lumber from a big box store to do this project. So stick around, we're gonna go ahead and attempt to get joining this wood.
Okay, so I've got all my lumber laid out here, and there's a couple things that I have to do before I start jointing and planing them to mill them down, right? So there's some things you have to take into consideration is the limitations of your tools. So the tools that I have, I have a 6-inch joiner and a 13-inch planer. Don't really have to worry about the planer too much because it can handle a pretty wide board. Nothing here I have is over 9 inches, so I'm good there. But I do have a few boards, if I can remember my train of thought, that are over 6 inches. Actually, almost all of them save for this one. Um, even my 6-inch boards are really like 6, six and a quarter which my joiner has an edge guard, which we'll see shortly here. And so I can't put a six and a quarter inch board through my joiner. That being said, there are a couple of ways to get around that. Some ways you can do are to take the guard off. I'm not experienced up enough yet to even attempt that much less recommended. So I'm going to go the safer route and I'm going to cut my boards down so that my joiner can accommodate them. So I'm going to start with my one by six by eight. As you can see, I've labeled all of my pieces of wood here with a piece of green frog tape and then the dimension that it needs to end in, even though that won't be necessarily the case. So this one by six by eight needs to get cut into two and a quarter inch, one and a half inch, and one and a half inch. So two one and a half inch pieces and one uh, two and a quarter inch pieces. That's a total of about five and a quarter inches of stock that I need from this piece or of lumber that I need from this piece of stock. And this board is about six and a quarter inches long. So that's about an inch to play with. Now what you don't want to do, and the whole reason I'm shooting this scene here, is to say that I don't want to just measure from this edge, which is a straight edge from the mill, two and a quarter inches, and then make a cut on my table saw, giving me a straight and exact two and a quarter inch piece because I'm going to have to edge join it. And when you edge join it, even though you're taking off a minuscule amount, probably an eighth or a sixteenth, depending on how much it needs, you're going to take some off. So if I cut this to exactly two and a quarter inches, I'm going to end up with a piece that's a less, lesser width, how do you say that, than two and a quarter inches. So what I did is I went ahead and I measured out two and three quarters inches. I could have even done two and a half two and three quarters inches, and I'll make my table saw cut there to split this evenly almost um, so that I can edge joint and face joint each one of these sides to get it down to that exact dimension and square cut prior to making my final cuts, that two and a, hunt, two and a quarter, one and a half, and one and a half cut. So let's go ahead and do that. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to utilize the table saw. And like I said earlier, I paid the miller a little bit extra to give me a straight edge on each one of my boards. So this is my straight edge on this board. So this is the edge that I need to run against the table saw. Okay, so obviously I'm wearing something a little bit different. We're back tomorrow. If you're watching this in like the weird time of YouTube, uh, it's been a day since I started this and it has been a day. So I'm gonna kind of rearrange how I'm gonna like shoot this video. Unfortunately, a lot more of me talking with that 15 minute intro and then this versus me actually doing, but that's okay because this isn't one of those videos where John Build It, the guy that I got this plan from, does it all in like one video and it looks so easy and like, well, not easy, but it looks like, hey, I can do that. Uh, no, this is going to be a series, right? We're doing this in parts and we're doing it so that we can learn together because remember, this is a hobbyist channel and I want you to learn from what I learned so that you don't eat $20 or a day like I just did. And so what I mean by that is remember how I said I got all this for $200? Well, I'm going to have to up that to $220 after I go and buy another board from the local sawmill. I ate up a board, and I'm going to chalk it up to learning. I ate up a board learning, and I'm going to show you exactly uh, what I meant. So I'll show you what I did and kind of why I think it's ruined and whatnot and why I think it happened. And then anybody that's watching this that might actually have a clue um, and isn't just learning like I am or watching to learn, Go ahead and tell me if you have any ideas. I'll kind of give you my hypothesis about what I think I did wrong or what was wrong with my joiner, and we'll go from there. But after all of that, I have one single dimensionalized piece of lumber, and I am so excited that I have this. So um, let me go ahead and rearrange the camera, and then we'll talk about what happened. All right, so I think I'm like weirdly close to the camera right now. That's okay. I want you guys to be able to see exactly what I'm talking about. So um, to put this into perspective, we start with a one by six by 10, right? That's what I started with that huge board. Now, obviously I can't 
already went through this, but I can't join something that long and I can't join something that wide. And honestly, it wasn't even safe for me to try to rip something that wide or sorry, that long on my table saw. So I took it over to my miter saw and I cut it down into manageable lengths as per the plans, right? Um, and I kind of touched on this yesterday, but I really want to retouch on it because it's so, so important and part of what I think I did incorrectly. So this is what I started with, right? I need a two and a quarter inch uh, wide by three quarter inch thick by 30 and three eighth inch long piece. So this right here is a 36 inch board. It's about three inches wide and it's one inch thick, right? So I touched on this yesterday. You want everything to be over dimensioned when you start, right? Because the milling process, depending on what you start with, can take a lot of your stock away. Um, and so let me show you kind of what happened here. So that's what we start with. That's why I have this board here. going to put that one away. What I did to get it down to size was I took it over to my joiner and I faced one. And you can already see what's going on here. So when you, when you joint something, let me bring my board back. You want to lay it down first and figure out if you've got any crooks, um, concaves, uh, whatever, can't think of the word, uh, in your board. So as you can see, this one does. Right now I have it crowned down. So there's some light up here and there's some light up here. All that means is the peak of the piece is down here and I can rock it. So that's what you're doing when you join something, especially face joining, you're trying to get that flat and square. So what you want to do is you always want to join concave down and uh, everybody has their opinion on that, but I really think the answer is concave down, which is just like this. So the crown, the peak of it is up top and the bow is down here. That was the word I was looking for, the bow. Okay, so I've got a reference side here and a reference side here. Reference means that they're flat against the table. So as I push this through the joiner, I'm gonna take stock off until I get to reach this height here and it starts jointing that to make it a completely flat board. Now, why it's so important and why I messed up here, okay? So for that 30 and 3 eighths board, I started with a 32 inch board that gave me about an inch, a little bit less on each side of it for error. Um, and this is where it gets a little complicated because I don't know if it's me, my technique, or my joiner. I think it was a combination of both. So, when I started joining this board, and remember this one was only 32 inches, you'll see that it's much worse than I started with. So let me put it correctly. Um, I still have the bow, well, kind of, but now I've got like the opposite issue. I've got these sides are, are pretty tapered. They're pretty thin. So while it may be flat in the center now, I got the bow out, over and out here, I'm at like already a half inch length or thickness. And that's a problem because I need at least three quarters. And it's like your mom always said, you can always take more, but you ever, can't ever take less. I think maybe I'm not remembering that correctly, um, but it tapered at both ends and it especially tapers on the leading end that you're pushing through the joiner. So some of the reasons I think that was happening was one, I was putting too much pressure on the outfeed table. Um, some people will recommend you do that and you still want to keep enough pressure on the piece so that it counteracts the force that fr uh, the force of friction and uh, the force of the cutter heads pushing up on the piece of lumber. Um, so as you can see, it's tapered, but it only tapers for like the first inch or two, and then it gets back to pretty um, constant thickness throughout the piece, and it tapers a little bit towards the back end. So what I've discovered is that if I cut a wide enough stock, and it all totally depends, totally, totally depends on what the piece you start with is. So if you can see already, once you cut down your lumber, that you're going to have a significant bow like this piece did, then you're going to need some extra stock on the ends there so that as it tapers, you're not actually eating into the piece of lumber that, or the lumber that you're going to use. You're going to, you're going to trim that off essentially. Um, and so that's what I did with this piece here. So as you can see, well, it's obviously going to be all messed up because it's not on a flat surface. I started with about 36 inches on this one, and I didn't need nearly that much. I have the piece of scrap over there that I trimmed off. Um, this one did not have a significant bow at all. Some of my pieces have like a quarter inch worth of bow from the table to the top or to the bottom of the piece, and that, that's a lot. This one really had maybe an eighth of an inch, um, and so it was pretty easy to pass through the joiner and then the planer and whatnot. Um, and then you, you trim the sides once you've edge joined and you've got a straight edge. So uh, that's my recommendation, that's what happened. And let me kind of just walk you through the joiner here, what that looks like and how to make sure that, um, oh, I didn't talk about that piece. So that was 
my issue, the technique, right, of how I was pushing it through and not using over-dimensioned enough wood. And maybe that's totally wrong. Like I said, if somebody is watching this and they're like, oh, no, you should be able to do it from the size that you need, maybe plus or minus an inch like I originally tried to do, please let me know in the comments because I would love to know why this wasn't working. But this is the fix that I found in the meantime. The other issue that I had was how my joiner was set up. So let's move to the joiner. Okay, the joiner. So what you need to know about the joiner is really the three pieces, the in-feed table, the out-feed table, and the fence. And this is, again, kind of like the board feet, a down and dirty. There are some great in-depth videos like the ones that I watched. I'll even link some in the description here to help you set your joiner up properly. But just so that you can try to troubleshoot like I was doing, why what was happening was, this is what I figured out. So, and this is our guard, obviously, but this is um, just the safety feature. Okay, so when everything is straight and level, so let me go ahead and level this out. There we go. I should be able to take my straight edge, we'll use a level in this case, and put it right over top, and my in feed and out feed table should be coplanar. And what that means is that they are exactly level with each other. Um, so I can't rock it when I push on this end or that end. And that's what I was able to do. It was maybe maybe a 16th, maybe even a 32nd of an inch. Um, my out feed table was higher than my in feed table. And that's going to be an issue. And it's going to aggravate that tapering um, effect. The other thing I had to fix, and this is a lot harder to see because I've got my guard in and I don't want to take it off, is the cutter head, the blades, if you have a spiral like me or a blade, it needs to be either directly even with your outfeed table, which is very hard to measure, or just slightly above. And this is how you can tell if it's just slightly above. Okay, so I'm going to get a screwdriver to push here because you never want to push on your blade assembly with your bare hands. Don't ask me how I know that. And you're going to slightly push and watch the level here. See if it'll catch a blade. Push it back a little bit. So you want it to be over a blade. If you've got a spiral like me, move it to where you know you're going to get a blade. Keep pushing. Watch the level. Keep watching. Keep watching. Okay, of course, that didn't actually do what I wanted it to do. Okay, we'll try it with this guy here. So push it back. There you go. Okay. I think the level is just a little too heavy for what I'm, I'm doing here. So we're going to just move it back one more time in case you missed it. All right, so as my blade comes around, watch what's going to happen. It moves my straight edge, I mean, maybe an eighth, a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch forward, meaning that my cutter head is just slightly, slightly, slightly above my outfeed table, and that's what you want. You either want it directly parallel or just slightly higher, but you never want it lower. And you can tell if it's lower if you uh, put your blade height directly against your flat edge, or if it never actually never touches your flat edge. That's, that's how you know. <laughs> because if your uh, flat, your straight edge is parallel to your in feed and out feed table and the cutter, edge, cutter blade is never touching, you can't even see what I'm talking about because of this guard, I'm so sorry. Um, if it's never touching the bottom of that straight edge, well, then clearly your cutter head's too low, so then you want to raise it up. And you do that on this win by manipulating the outfeed table. And each joiner is going to have its own specific instructions. So make sure to keep that instruction manual and then actually read through it when you need it. So that was the issue I think that I was having combined with my technique. So I lowered this just a little bit to get it coplanar with my infeed table. And then the blades were just a hair higher, which has worked out for me. So we're going to go ahead and plane another piece here, or join and then plane and then cut down to size so that you can see the process kind of start to finish here.
All right, so here's the finished piece here. Uh, if you can see me, if not, you can see the piece. Um, you can see that it's got a completely flat and smooth face and really not that bad of a taper along the edges. There's a slight taper, but it's not bad. Like I said, the bow wasn't very bad. So now we're going to take this jointed face over to the planer, and you'll see why I'm doing that first before going to the edge jointing process. And just a tip, some people take a pencil or a marker and scribe scribbles along the top so that they can see how much they're taking off each pass. And once all of the scribbles are gone, they know that they have a flat board. For me, however, since this is rough sawn lumber, the top and face of the board here are very rough. And so as I'm taking material off, once the entire board looks flat like this and there are no more rough edges, I know that I've got a flat board. Okay, so I'm here at the planer, and I'm going to start at about one inch thickness is what this is. And if you can see on my DeWalt, you probably can't because of this support beam. If I slide my board in and then lower the machine, there's a depth gauge to tell me how much I'll take off per depth of cut. Now, remember, this board was bowed, so I don't want to go too crazy on the initial pass because at the front end where it's measuring the depth of cut, it's going to say I'm only taking off a 32nd of an inch. But when it gets to the crown where this bow peaks, it's going to take off closer to a 16th or more. And I don't want to bog down the machine, certainly not more than an eighth at a time. So I start low at a 32nd of an inch on the front of the board, and it'll take off more as it passes through. Now, just so that we can measure some things here, I want this to be three quarter of an inch thick when it's all said and done. Remember the jointed face, the flat face goes down so that the planer will make the top face parallel. I've got a stop on my machine here that'll let me set this to three quarter inch, meaning I cannot lower this any lower than three quarter of an inch, and it's pretty close, probably within a 32nd of an inch or closer. But just so that we can verify, we'll measure here, and I'm at about just a 16th over a 7th of an eighth of an inch high. So we're going to plane this down quite a bit. It's going to take quite a few passes to get to three quarters. So let's go ahead and start doing that, and we'll check it when it's finished. Okay, and one more thing to show you as we're about to go ahead and edge joint, just like we did the face joint, so you can see the grain lines here. And when you joint, you always want to joint with the grain running towards the bottom of the board. So what I mean by that is this is a real nice defined grain line here. So you can see it starts at the top of the board, and as we move to the right, it moves its way to the bottom of the board. Each line of grain will do that. Some are easier to tell which way they're running than others. And you want to do the same thing when you look at the side when you're going to face or joint um, a face. They're a little bit harder to tell depending on the species of wood uh, when you're looking at the edge grain, but just do your best to decide. It'll make a cleaner cut um, with less of an issue. So we're going to go ahead and edge joint this. And when you edge joint, you always want to take a square of some sort and make sure that your fence is completely square, which mine is not. So we're going to loosen 
our fence. It drops down just a little bit, that's okay. Get it nice and completely square. Hope that it stays while I tighten it. And now our fence is completely square to the table itself, and that's what we need for a good edge joint. All right, this one, not quite perfect, but uh, there you have it. A 30 and 3 eighths by 2 and a quarter by 3 quarter inch piece. So got to sand up some of the edges here where the miter saw didn't make the cleanest cut. And then I got some saw marks in there, but that's okay. I can sand those down at least to be manageable. But uh, yeah, so that's what it looks like when it's all said and done. And that was kind of the process going through face joining, planing, edge joining, bringing it to the table saw to rip to final width and then come into the miter saw to rip to final length. So that's it. I just have a lot more pieces to go. This was for the um, edge of the dresser, right? Both of those panels and then some rails uh, or styles to go with it. Um, and then we'll have to use the router table to get all of that in there. But uh, that's kind of the process. And like I said, I just wanted to show you what that looks like start to finish. You can get real in depth on how to use your joiner, your planer, table saw, miter saw, all that good stuff with some great people on YouTube. I'll link some of the videos that I've watched in the description. But before we go, I promised you I'd show you why this was worth it in the end. Okay, I promised you guys why I would tell you or that I would tell you why the startup cost is so worth it, right? I'm assuming that you, like me, are your hobbyist woodworker that intends to do multiple projects over the next few years, right? It's a hobby that you're getting into. I'm also assuming that you have those basic tools that I covered in my first video. The circular saw, the band saw, not the band saw, the jigsaw, maybe a miter, maybe a table saw, but still not even really those things. So let's save some money while we're woodworking, right? So if I said that I bought all this wood for $200 plus tax and that to buy the same amount of wood from Home Depot would be $750 not including tax, that's another 60. So let's call it 810 even, right? $200 versus 810 but you're telling me that you don't have the required tools to mill lumber, like your joiner or your planer. So let me convince you. You can get entry-level tools, which I'm saying is the Win brand, like the joiner that I have. You can get a Win tabletop 6-inch joiner with three blades for $235. And you can get a Win benchtop planer, 12 inches, two blades, for $304. That plus my total cost of wood brings us to $739. That's $20 less. Wow, I'm bad at math. That's $11 less than my overall cost just to buy the wood milled down from a big box store. So that's my pitch to you. That's why the startup cost is so worth it. You can make that money back in a project or two if you're looking to sell, depending on your market. However, even if you aren't, you can save a lot of money over the long run by buying wood from your local sawmill and milling it down yourself. Yes, it takes time, so if you wanna say that, you're losing some money there, but it's our own time, right? And we already do this after five o'clock, after our main jobs, so our time is our own. That's my pitch to you. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something today, whether it was about the joiner, whether it was about how to save money on wood, how to calculate board feet, any of those things. Please drop a like, a subscribe, and a comment if you've got any advice or critiques to make. Thanks, guys. This has been Five O'Clock Woodwork.